welcome the chief guest for uh, the today's uh, session dr sr pondian who is uh, dean planning uh, at triple uh, itdm kanjivaram and also a coordinator for tlc uh, he has done lot of uh, outreach programs through tlc and conducted a lot of various programs he has supported many people uh, through that program and uh, he is having lot of experiences he completed his phd in iit uh, have worked in uh, some of the universities in uh, us japan and south korea Uh, and uh, also in india he has worked in various institutions uh, so he, he, his research areas uh, include uh, robots uh, underwater uh, uh, equipped machineries then uh, electromechanical systems uh, rehabilitation systems renewable energy systems like that uh, he has lot of uh, honors and re uh, rewards uh, under his credit uh, from various uh, universities outside uh, so he is such an eminent person a friendly person uh, he is uh, very friendly to all a uh, very uh, helping mind uh, such a great person with a lot of expertise from foreign universities so it is our uh, pleasure to have you for uh, this today's session sir so over to you sir now i uh, welcome sir to deliver the lecture good afternoon everybody so uh, thank you uh, to <clears throat> dr julius for giving me this opportunity to deliver this session on uh, product design and 3d printing Uh, if any of you are interested in contacting me, please uh, email me at srp at triple i t d m dot a c dot i n. And uh, in this talk, I will uh, basically focus on uh, uh, product design and three D printing, and then uh, innovation and a uh, little bit of entrepreneurship. So I will start with the motivation of. Uh, Uh, why product design and manufacturing are important this workshop is about additive manufacturing which is uh, an emerging area of uh, manufacturing which is important for the economy particularly in the context of recovery from the covid virus and its after effects both on the economy and the um, education system higher education system then i will briefly give a motivation for why we need innovation and entrepreneurship then i will go on to 3d printing the i will focus more on the applications aspect of uh, uh, 3d printing and then how to introduce the 3d printing in education and then uh, while uh, 3d printing is the emerging area and it's going to be a major part of industry 4.0 etc uh still uh, we should not forget uh, subtractive manufacturing and robotics uh, uh, as per a paper by swamidas in uh, international journal of production research in 2003 uh, about 70% uh, of uh, <coughs> manufacturing uh, companies they use still use uh, subtractive manufacturing like cnc and uh, you know injection molding etc as well as uh, robotics and automation so therefore uh, i'll briefly um, mention that because mechanically uh, the 3d printers and uh, subtractive manufacturing uh, systems like uh, cnc machines are very similar you now it is basically the end effect that is different and uh, then i will uh, come to product design give several examples of uh, product design and development from some of my own work as well as uh, how to introduce 3d printing in uh, make a space via pbl pbl as uh, many of you will be familiar stands for uh, project based learning which is a very neglected area of our engineering education system and then i will conclude with some advice uh, for uh, <coughs> proceeding further so why manufacture huh? so uh, this uh, table gives the comparison of uh, india and china which have uh, similar uh, population but then if you look at the manufacturing sector china is uh, far ahead of us almost 11 times uh, our uh, manufacturing output and then if you look at employment which is uh, the need of the hour for india they have almost nine times uh, the employment in manufacturing compared to us so a lot of focus in india particularly in the engineering education system is on it sector every graduate whether in uh, computer science and engineering or it or the electrical sciences or mechanical and civil they are more interested in no uh, the it sector job but then the entire it sector uh, uh, employment in india is only about 4 million or so 
whereas um, the manufacturing employment is 11 million therefore if i can double or even triple our manufacturing uh, sector capacity it will be a massive uh, you know growth in uh, gdp as well as jobs for india that is why the government is talking about make in india etc but there are some logistic and the systemic problems uh, that will come I will come to then if you look at uh, hourly wages uh, india has an advantage compared to china that is why many of the chinese factories and uh, factory jobs are being outsourced to countries like india vietnam uh, thailand etc and therefore we should make use of this opportunity but then increasingly manufacturing is uh, becoming innovation based and then if you look at the global innovation index from the wipo uh, we see that uh, china again is uh, well ahead of us about uh, rank of 14 whereas we are at 48 and we are behind even countries like uh, malaysia vietnam and thailand We're just ahead of philippines which is ranked uh, 50 and um, uh, people est estimate that almost 80 million jobs it's, it's a big number no? will be outsourced by china because it's uh, labor force is becoming aged and it is becoming more expensive and uh, less competitive and therefore we should make use of this opportunity to give a boost to our manufacturing sector and uh, um, benefit from that and then if you look at the uh, growth in uh, economies of china and india till 1993 uh, india and china were uh, pretty much on the same uh, level uh, in terms of per capita gdp and um, china basically opened up liberalized uh, after 1979 or 80, whereas we opened up in the 1990s. But then um, China has outstripped India in terms of uh, economic growth. And uh, they did this by balancing on two legs. And they said, whereas we put all the eggs in the IT sector, which is mainly producing jobs for college graduates with English speaking skills, mainly from urban areas, etc. Uh, if it is a factory job, even a high school uh, dropout with some, you know, local um, some medium education, they can do that. And China became the world's factory, you know, by focusing on low-cost mass manufacturing. But then uh, they, are, they didn't ignore uh, the IT sector like we ignored our manufacturing sector. So they also focused on IT sector. Therefore, actually, the though we say India is an IT superpower, China is actually doing very well, even better than us in the IT sector. In fact, uh, um, we are not, not many of us are using Indian apps, uh, whereas uh, Chinese apps like TikTok or games like PUBG, etc. No, they are all popular around the world. So therefore, uh, we need to focus more on uh, uh, manufacturing. So therefore, we have a balanced growth. Again, the Indian government has been focusing on this for the last five six years. But then, uh, though we say make in India, a lot of uh, uh, industry suppliers they are depending on Chinese imports. Uh, due to the strategic uh, conflict with China, the government has, uh, you know, banned uh, many imports from China, and therefore we should uh, focus on, uh, you know, filling this gap indigenously in manufacturing sector, and accordingly we should educate our uh, engineers and technicians uh, accordingly. So then, um, this is a, a one example of how the holy toys. You know? Again, this is a basic engineering design, a product design problem. Here you can see, you know, our uh, um, holy toys are very primitive compared to the more innovative Chinese products. And therefore, until a few years back, you know, they were being uh, spammed by Chinese suppliers. And therefore, we need to focus on uh, <coughs> design of uh, products in the area of uh, consumer of uh, system products like uh, toys and um, different systems. Whereas uh, the engineering uh, curriculum is still not focusing on design. If you look at the ACT model curriculum, it is mostly focusing on uh, CAD and uh, uh, CAM, etc. Not on the product design. And uh, I'm glad that this workshop is focusing on uh, product design, which has to start in the first year itself. Again. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Sandil Kumaran from Triple ITTM, who is currently the coordinator of the Teaching Learning Center, uh, he is an expert in additive manufacturing. He'll be he may, he may have introduced about the Teaching Learning Center. One problem in uh, promoting manufacturing in India is that to, for the 
future workforce engineers uh, and others to become familiar with this uh, concept and their applications we need manufacturing technology education uh, equipment but then these are very very expensive now even indian uh, uh, suppliers are quite expensive because of lack of competition so therefore what uh, we focused in the to play in the mtlc was to develop these uh, um, technology education equipment in-house, you know, like uh, 3D printers, CNC machines, lathes, uh, laser cutters, laser engravers, uh, uh, plasma cutters, and uh, um, PCB machines. All these machines, you know, we did desktop, you know, not very big size, you know, but then it can be uh, expanded later. So all this uh, equipment we built from scratch using DIY, do it yourself or build your own uh, uh, approach and then uh, these uh, uh, technologies have been sold to many places like IIT Hyderabad and then uh, Viltek University in Chennai. Many colleges, universities, polytechnics, you know, they adopted our replicated our machines by sending students as uh, interns to TLC or ordering and buying our equipment, etc. So, therefore, the TLC is a good example of uh, product design, development, and then. Uh, so we were not into uh, large scale sale because our focus is on developing new technologies and then propagating them so that uh, colleges and uh, faculty and students can develop uh, themselves with our help. So why do we need to innovate? If you look at the modern uh, <clears throat> um, economies, innovation is the engine of modern economies. And then a lot of this uh, in a technological innovation is disruptive, like in the case of uh, self-driving cars, which will you know um, um, disemploy many taxi drivers and so on. So this innovation uh, also has so many positive aspects, such as value addition. It makes your product competitive. That is why you know innovation is important. And then the existing products uh, and technologies become better. Nowadays, there's a lot of focus on smart products, so smart product design. So you can add sensors and actuators or motors. Then you can connect them like IoT, you know, to the internet. And um, increasingly, you can add machine learning or uh, artificial intelligence to these uh, products and then make them smart. And therefore, uh, like in the case of the smartphone, you know, the, these uh, products are very capable of uh, uh, you know, high productivity or safety or fuel efficiency and so on. And then innovation also helps solve pressing socioeconomic problems like some of the examples I will show here. And more importantly, you know, innovation helps create uh, more better paying jobs by, you know, developing um, industry infrastructure to, you know, develop and market these uh, uh, products. And then there is also a new trend in product design, which is called designed for extreme affordability you know many people in the countries like india are in africa they are poor, quite poor so therefore the products that we develop you know, should be affordable even by for those at the bottom of the economic pyramid so the, you can look at the stanford university d school you know, this design school where they send their master students on a one-year project uh, abroad you know and then they start companies including in india so therefore our students can work on such uh, projects and then convert these projects into products and then finally into companies. So as this uh, slide shows, you know, we have a very young population, almost half the population is below the age of 25 or 30. And therefore, if we can't create jobs for this uh, younger population, there will be social unrest and then unemployment and so on. So therefore, uh, uh, the problem of employability is a big issue among engineering graduates due to lack of skills. And therefore, how do we give them you know, skills? So ultimately, as uh, engineers, uh, we need to uh, design products. We need to develop these products, test them, and then market them. And therefore, product design is a very basic skill for engineers. Unfortunately, it is not emphasized so far, and we can focus on this. And this, again, is a very interesting uh, comparison. Uh, if you look at the power of innovation, uh, Stanford uh, University in the U.S. is uh, most famous for uh, products like uh, HP, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, etc. So what their students do and faculty do is that from projects they develop products and then from products they develop companies. 
Uh, Google, for example, was an unfinished PhD project for a search efficient uh, web search, search engine. Similarly, Yahoo was a PhD project uh, uh, in electrical engineering at Stanford University. Facebook was you know, kind of an electronic directory project at Harvard and so on. So therefore, we can do those things. Uh, um, similar approach we can do and then uh, kind of develop products and then start up companies through entrepreneurship. Even in Japan, they have this culture called monozukuri. Mono means thing, sukuru means you know, make. You know? So a lot of these big uh, corporations like Panasonic, Honda, Sony, etc. They all started as you know, a small companies uh, making small products. For example, National Panasonic. The founder, he started making uh, um, you know, light sockets. Uh, Honda, uh, the founder, you know, he started making uh, um, engines for electric uh, bicycles. You know? so, and then they grew bigger and bigger. So if you look at Stanford, for example, um, though we say India is you know, an IT superpower, if you look at the number of companies in IT, Stanford alone has created almost uh, three times the number of companies. You can imagine how much uh, you know emphasis they created. If you look at the jobs created by this Stanford graduates, including uh, Yahoo, Google, etc., it's 5.4 million jobs, more than. Uh, um indian it sector so you can see the power of innovation so then the question is uh, uh, how do we uh, copy some of the best practices of uh, universities like stanford uh, mit is number two uh, even they have uh, created double the number of uh, startups compared to our entire it sector more jobs and then if you look at 2011 and uh, 2014 uh, so then the um, if you treat uh, the to take up all these income gender, um, generated by these companies, it's more than India's uh, uh, GDP. You know? Therefore, there's a lot of scope for innovation in India. And then an, an interesting example of product design is at the origin of Silicon Valley. You know, Silicon Valley is a major engine of the US economy indirectly because many much of our IT sector depends on uh, Silicon Valley. It depends on uh, uh, we also depend on Silicon Valley as an engine of uh, our economy. And then the father of Silicon Valley was the professor called Frederick Thurman at uh, Stanford University. So what he did was uh, he wrote a couple of very popular textbooks. For the royalty from these uh, textbooks, he gave it to his uh, students you know, so that uh, they can start some uh, companies based on their ideas. So the first company... Uh, in Silicon Valley was the Hewlett Packard, which started in a 12 feet by 18 uh, feet um, uh, garage. And that is called the say, birthplace of Silicon Valley. And they were graduate students, so master students of Terman. And then the first product that HP developed was in, I think, 1938 or so, the HP 200A low distortion uh, audio oscillator you know, using negative feedback. So this is an idea that Hewlett learned in uh, Terman's class. He did a master's thesis uh, project on uh, building an oscillator. What we do in our classes is we study amplifiers, you know, machines, and then engines or uh, oscillators, etc. But we don't ask questions. You know, how this can be applied? You know, how can this can be translated into um, uh, use in the economy or in the society or industry and so on? So therefore, the first customer for this product was Walt Disney to make the movie Fantasia. In fact, even Steve Jobs, you know, so when he was a junior high school student, uh, he till just took up the telephone and called Hewlett saying that I am having an electronics project in school. I need some components. So Hewlett liked his approach. He said, why don't you come and do a summer internship in uh, HP? So there he met uh, his future uh, you know, co-founder of Apple, Steve Wozniak. He was a graduate engineer. Then they started discussing, and then uh, Apple was born. So therefore, uh, you can see the power of um, product um, uh, no innovation and products at the starting. So this, on the left here, top is this uh, hum, humble garage where the Silicon Valley was born. These are the two founders, um, and then this is the first product, which is the oscillator um, with you know uh, uh, packaging and uh, enclosure and everything. So you can see that now Stanford is going back to its. Uh, or of course, it never left it the approach but then they have revised the electrical engineering curriculum in 2014 i don't know let us see if we can uh, um, see the audio play hopefully you can listen it uh, just a brief uh, couple of minutes so in 2014 they revised the curriculum so that uh, 
uh, students from the first year, first semester, uh, they start uh, doing innovation and product design. So I don't know if you can hear. So uh, anyway, maybe some of you can uh, watch it later or you can uh, download the PPT and link from that. So, so basically what they're doing here in this is uh, uh, they're saying that uh, Electrical engineering no, is uh, basically uh, maker culture. So this maker space, maker uh, culture, tinkering labs, um, fab labs, fabrication labs, etc. They're all now buzzwords. So they say that the head of the department says, you no, know, electrical engineering is a maker culture. But then all engineering is a maker culture. No? So we all need to uh, make stuff or create stuff. There's a famous uh, textbook you know, on the existential pleasures of engineering. This is a textbook that is uh, taught uh, in the very first year as an introduction to um, engineering courses, engineering design courses. So there was a lot of joy or fun, no? Involved the satisfaction uh, derived from uh, solving problems by innovating or creating new products or systems or software or hardware or a combination, etc. And as I mentioned earlier, Google and Yahoo, they were unfinished PhD pro projects. So some of you might be familiar with Snapchat, which is a multi-billion dollar company. It started as a course project at Stanford University. In fact, even in a DM in 2015, I first uh, offered the mechatronics uh, course for graduate students. Uh, there was a student um, in electrical engineering. No? So he did a project in uh, Virtual reality, he got a job uh, after graduation in virtual reality after working for a couple of years. You know, he has his own uh, VR company in Chennai. You know? So therefore, uh, uh, what students learn and do in courses you know, through project-based learning, it can convert into startups even in India. In fact, I had another uh, project engineer in TLC, uh, Kamal Balaji. You know, he's uh, having his own startup in Coimbatore making autonomous robots for IIT Bombay's e-antra project and then for a polytechnic in uh, Singapore he has sold this uh, uh, autonomous uh, mobile robots to colleges in Coimbatore and so on. So therefore uh, we need to encourage uh, project-based learning. Unfortunately particularly in the IITs uh, the emphasis is more on theory and because uh, of their you know, uh, high status or whatever you know, the IIT students are uh, not, you know, uh, encouraging uh, uh, or very much enthusiastic about projects, but at least in other institutions, no, we need to have uh, uh, projects which can lead to innovations and in product. In fact, uh, uh, in Japan, for example, you know, the entire final year, the students don't do any coursework; it is devoted only to a project. And uh, uh, similarly, in the two-year uh, master's uh, program, the entire second year. The students do only project, but then they start doing uh, some uh, visiting the lab, working in the lab in the previous year or semester itself. And therefore, every Japanese uh, student, no, he does something very useful, even if it doesn't uh, translate into project in one semester or one year. No, the next batch, you no, know, they take it up under the mentorship, uh, continuing guidance of the supervisor, and then within a few years, they have a complete uh, project, no, that. Uh, um, becomes a product that can be sold in the market. <clears throat> so uh, the case for product design is that as engineers, we should not just you know buy uh, equipment or products or systems and use them and maintain them, but we need wherever possible, we need indigenous them or we need to improve them then try to compete in the global market <clears throat> and then uh, as we mentioned you add the smartness to that through intelligence or information or data then this smart product can be more competitive compared to the conventional products and then this innovation and the product design should start in uh, colleges not even colleges in high schools in fact uh, uh, the TLC you know has an interesting history you know the very first uh, CNC machine that we built here you now using simple Arduino and then some stepper motors, etc., which we teach in our classes. You know, this was a summer project uh, by my you know son who was studying in the US in the 10th grade. 
So it was a summer project uh, in my mother college. No, now we are selling these uh, machines. Or, you know, well, um, dozens of these machines are used in uh, high schools, colleges, polytechnics, and uh, universities. So therefore, uh, um, you know, we can start as early as possible. And uh, <clears throat> just a couple of days back, or yesterday, you know, there was uh, news. Some of you might have seen uh, in CNN or in Indian media also. For the first time, the Time magazine of the U.S. Uh, uh, started this kid of the year. So the first uh, kid of the year uh, this year no, was uh, Indian origin student. Her name is uh, Gitanjali Rao. No? So we, I have shown some of her uh, videos when she was 11 year old. She uh, took some nano sensors which are developed in uh, MIT material science department and then I uh, use them with a very simple Arduino Bluetooth uh, module and uh, a mobile app no so for detecting uh, lead uh, contamination in drinking water and then she did a couple of other projects and then by the age of 15 no, she has become uh, internationally famous so therefore if uh, so students can do those things the same basic tools like arduino raspberry pi microcontrollers uh, etc these are all available you know widely therefore faculty should work with this uh, students and then they can come up with the innovative solutions now this um, Rao has also worked on uh, you know technological tools for uh, minimizing opioid addiction and then cyber security and so on so she was selected as the kid of the year out of 5000 entries from around the world so in india we have a lot of engineering colleges engineering students and faculty but not enough uh, innovations and innovative products we mostly buy them and then operate them Sometimes, you know, these are difficult to maintain, particularly if you import from abroad. These are very expensive, even spare parts are very expensive. Therefore, if we can develop these products, you know, starting with the educational products on our own, and then you know, we can gradually upscale them, then we can be able to use this equipment for industrial purposes. We had a lot of inquiries from <coughs> um, industry. You know, it's in fact, the um, product that we started. Uh, with the CNC machine, you know, it was uh, given the second prize at the Imtex exhibition in 2019 in Bangalore. So many visitors, you know, they were requesting us whether we could use this machine for engraving to glass or cutting glass or building CNC, doing CNC welding, etc., etc. Therefore, you start with a simple basic machine, you know, and then you can add capabilities, strength, power, size, etc. And then you can take a basic CNC machine and then convert it in the same machine into multiple other machines, including 3D printers and uh, so on. So. so therefore, there's a lot of potential. But unfortunately, you know, because of uh, the partly because of the failure of our education system, you know, when our graduates go into industry, uh, they don't have this, you know, enthusiasm or uh, motivation you know, to continuously improve their product. For example, the Tejas, the LCA. You know, Light combat aircraft it took almost uh, 35 years, you know, by which time the uh, Chinese became a you know, superpower. Similarly, uh, another example that I give here, you no, know, is uh, this shows the static nature of this. Uh, this was the previous but the pre premier Padmini car because we imported this from Italy. You know, Italy has a left hand side driving, therefore they had this uh, handbrake lever on the left side, which is uh, they didn't. Uh, the company didn't change it for 30, 40 years. You know, therefore, this kind of uh, uh, stagnation is not making the country competitive therefore we should encourage the students to become you know innovative and uh, competitive in the college so I encourage interested faculty some of you may be familiar you know from my earlier uh, talk somewhere so this Olin College of Engineering is a very young engineering college founded in only in 1997 there are only two branches electrical and computer engineering and mechanical engineering very small only 350 students possibly smaller than many engineering departments in our colleges and universities but then it has become a role model for engineering education around the world the engineering faculty from around the world they visit this uh, college to learn how they are uh, you know uh, developing best practices mainly they focus on project based learning uh, design innovation and finally ending up at entrepreneurship so therefore we need to not just teach our students how to solve problems but also to find problems in that case you can try to ask questions how the concepts that they have learned in the classroom in the laboratory you know they can be applied 
to solve this problem. The, just to give a few examples from our own context. No? So the, on the right here, everybody is nowadays wearing a mask. So there was this uh, student from Sweden. He was an exchange uh, student at IIM Ahmedabad. He was having a lot of problems with uh, pollution in Ahmedabad. So therefore, uh, the existing masks were not very effective with him. Therefore, he went and uh, um, uh, designed his own uh, mask. No? And then he started a company called Arenium, you know, so to market this uh, uh, mask you know, um, globally. Similarly, there was this American student who went to PhD student, he went to China, Beijing, a lot of pollution there. So then you know, uh, the uh, air filters, you know, purifiers were very, very expensive. Therefore, he came up with a simple uh, idea of DIY, you no know, air filter, very cheap, just take this. Uh, no blower or fan from a car and then add a EPA filter and then no, use it. It's almost as effective as a very expensive commercial uh, air purifiers. No? So then he started giving workshops. He has a startup company, uh, you know, giving training and then selling this uh, low cost uh, air filters. So similarly, 3D printing. No? There's a lot of applications of 3D printers <coughs> in uh, rehabilitation and assistive technology. This is a very interesting example from the University of California, Berkeley. It's a master's student project. So one of the staff, you know, office workers in the university, she had a child with you know, a disabled arm. And commercial um, hands are very, very expensive. Moreover, as the child grows, you, know, you need to buy new hands, and which is prohibitively expensive. Therefore, he um, developed a very, very you know, small, almost uh, you know, zero cost, ten dollars versus commercially five thousand dollars. So he built them. It was featured in the news media, etc. Then the student wanted to work more, so he started doing PhD. So therefore, he can be more effective, you know, and building uh, better and better uh, prosthetic devices, etc. And uh, as you can see, you know, the product design takes time, as I mentioned earlier. I mean, in many of our uh, uh, thesis projects, etc., our students develop. Uh, uh, project, but then they you know they it stays as a prototype, and then it gathers dust, and then somebody else comes. You know, then they do another project. This project gets ignored, etc. And this here is a, a very good example of product design for assistive technology or, uh, for helping visually, you know, handicapped people. Developed at IIT Delhi, and then this is called a smart cane. So just take two very cheap. Uh, you know, ultrasonic sensors, many students, high school, college students, our own students, we, they do this project. But then uh, this project has been, you know, effectively perfected. It took IIT uh, Delhi engineers at their uh, assistive technology center almost eight years. No? So, so therefore, uh, the, uh, it, is, it is one thing to build a proof of concept prototype as part of a project. But it is a long way to know to perfect it, to test it in the market, and then make improvements, make adjustments, etc. So in the case of this low-cost smart cane, uh, it took them about eight years. But now this product, product, product is being sold to uh, you know visually impaired people in uh, India as well as uh, Africa, Latin America, and so on. It's a very good example of you know how we can do. That. Of course, this uh, has still some problems because. It is a fixed low-cost device, and therefore, in crowded conditions in India, it makes uh, no noise all the time, no warning. Therefore, it cannot distinguish. Therefore, now people are working on intelligent, uh, you know, um, smart canes, uh, uh, which have more potential. No, therefore, it can uh, uh, discriminate between moving objects and then people, and so on. So, so this is another interesting product. This is a multi-million. They got a hundred million dollar. That is about seven thousand five hundred crores no, investment from uh, venture capitalists. The students were driving every day to college. There's a lot of uh, speed bumps, you know, bumps on the road, potholes, and then uh, you know they put a um, damper, you no, know, like a hydraulic motor as a damper, and then uh, capture some of the energy of these uh, vibrations, you no, know? and then um, uh, they are not only make the Right, smooth, but also they you know regenerate energy and then increase uh, uh, the mileage of the vehicle and so on. So now they got an, uh, a company called Clear Motion that makes the digital chassis. They do you know 
active noise cancelling. It's basically a set suite of uh, sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers, and a lot of software built into a chassis or a platform for the car. So, which uh, makes the ride you know very pleasant. You know, it filters out noise. Uh, it makes the ride smooth and so on. So, it's a multi-million dollar company starting as a project. So. Similarly, there's another interesting, you know, uh, uh, very, you know, um, uh, satisfying uh, pro example. They build some, you know, a ride vehicle for uh, children, disabled children. So the joy of engineering is that, you no, know, you get to help somebody's improve life. This is another, uh, finally, a project, mechanical engineering, you know, um, commercial uh, models are fifty thousand to hundred thousand dollars. So the student, finally, a student, he built it for about two thousand dollars. It was CNN's you know, top inventions of the year. Then he has a startup company. Now a lot of people are inquiring because you know, old people with you know uh, uh, limited muscle strength, so they can wear the exoskeleton. They can you know, carry their uh, grandkids, etc. So again, you can see. This is also from the University of Pennsylvania Mechanical Engineering Department. Finally, as a project, so the, the existing uh, water jet cutter in the department was very huge and very expensive. Therefore, uh, the students went ahead, I know, and then built their own uh, desktop water jet cutter, which is very difficult. They took them about six, seven years, no, to perfect this project. But now this is being sold. We, I was even hoping to get one for the uh, TLC, you know. Um, for water jet, water jet carrying purposes. So this university, you know, has uh, most billionaires uh, from any university in the world, you no, know, because they encourage entrepreneurship and innovation by their students. So, so these are uh, several other uh, student innovations. In fact, uh, this is a very expensive robot goalkeeper here. You see Lionel Messi, the Argentinian soccer player, you no, know, uh, uh, testing it. You no, know. so this same. Uh, Product was developed by my former TLC project engineer. He's selling it to uh, game arcades, etc. No, basically, what you do here is you have a motorized goalkeeper, and then you got a stereo cameras on the two sides, and you estimate where the ball is going to go, and then you block it, you no, know, by controlling the motor. So, so there's a lot of interesting projects. This is another uh, impressive, you know, startup project by. Uh, be graduate of uh, instrumentation and control engineering from Maharashtra. And basically, what he has um, built is uh, um, um, uh, sanitary napkin dispenser for schools. So, there's some uh, NGOs in Maharashtra, they have ordered 3,000 uh, of this uh, product, no? and then he's selling them to uh, high schools so that you no know, girls in need of emergency they can uh, uh, get. Uh, by um, sanitary napkins from this machine. So, so there's a lot of uh, problems, particularly this is actuated by the COVID virus. No? So we have a uh, lot of uh, lack of uh, mass education at the primary level and uh, at the high, high school level, no? higher education level in colleges, universities. It's basically what is called the top and chop model. The teacher comes to the class, Writes you no know, equations and definitions, concepts on the board. They solve problems, and then you know, the students copy them, they memorize them, they reproduce them in the exams. Uh, so therefore, uh, they are, the actual technical skills are very limited. You no, know? students are consumers of uh, information, equations, formulas, concepts, etc. Et but they don't produce, uh, you know, products or innovations or software or hardware based on what they learn in the class. So this is where we are trying to make an impact by uh, promoting uh, product design and then development in the uh, curriculum. So, so therefore, uh, this can help uh, India with its governmental missions of Startup India. I already mentioned that uh, in TLC, there have been two startups by a former student and a former project engineer. So we have uh, contributed to Make in India in the face of uh, uh, starting with uh, uh, you know, desktop, uh, low cost, DIY, uh, educational, manufacturing education technology. So those who are interested, you can contact Dr. Uh, Sindhil Kumar and visit the TLC. You know, it's a very state of art facility, uh, one of the few in India with the kind of uh, facilities, infrastructure, etc. So you can benefit from that. So similarly, the government is promoting Digital India, Skill India. So, um, so TLC collaborated with uh, 
uh, corporate sector, the Club Gemini Corporation with the NGO sector, uh, the SRF Foundation, Shiram Fibers Foundation, and then we have reached out to around the 30, 40 schools in uh, about nine different states, but mainly Bangalore, uh, Chennai, uh, and Noida in Uttar Pradesh, as well as now we are expanding to um, um, Mumbai, Hyderabad, and Kolkata. So then also, SRF Foundation is taking this approach, you know, trying to encourage the uh, 3D printing, uh, tinkering, etc., in the government's adult tinkering lab in uh, 102 schools. You know? So, therefore, what started as a small summer project you know, a few years back, you know, now we are able to make so much impact, encouraging innovations among uh, not only college and polytechnic and university students, but even high school students. So, so again, you know, a few years back, uh, Narayana Muthi, the Infosys co founder, you know, he asked this question, you know, is there one invention, one technology, one idea produced by these IITs? No, there, there are a few, but then no, you know, when you compare them, like the smart can from IIT Delhi, it's a very useful product. But then compared to our peers like Stanford or MIT, uh, we are far behind. You no, know, therefore we can go go a long uh, you know, go a long way. So why do we need project-based learning? Again, our examination system is based on memorization tests and exams no it's not based on projects no? so student learning is passive whereas in project based learning it is active no? so because uh, i mean uh, you go to an industry the student is not going to be asked two marks questions or 16 marks questions instead they'll be given a project you know they'll be given a product or a software or hardware to design or a subsystem to design and then they'll be assigned a team given resources then they will be given specifications and consigns and funding materials at time duration and so on. So therefore, that is why you know uh, the Olin College of Engineering in US has become so famous around the world. You know because what the students will do in industry, you know, work on projects, develop products, and then market them. You know? Students are introduced to these uh, uh, you know methods, you know, as part of the curriculum instead of just you know theory based uh, uh, you know learning. So. And also, it is open at the learning for your tests and exams. Usually, there is only one question, so you answer to a solution, I mean, to an exercise or a uh, problem, numerical problem. Whereas in projects, there are multiple solutions. No, it's an unstructured problem solving. No, you can have different uh, approaches. There's no one best approach. There's an optimal approach that depends on the conditions which can change over time, etc. So therefore, our students are introduced to this real world engineering experience in the college itself through PBL. And then how to do that? Uh, so we need to build, first of all, a maker space, which you now provides um, uh, access to tools and resources like, you know, breadboards and soldering iron, components, uh, basic, you know, 3D printer, etc. Outside the college hours, weekends, and so on. So we have set up a maker space uh, in uh, Tiaraja College of Engineering, Madurai, several other colleges, they are setting up them also. And then uh, uh, IIIT, Himachal Pradesh, you know, a makerspace is being set up uh, by a former uh, project engineer from uh, TLC. And we have set up these makerspaces in all these government high schools that we are uh, working with. We have set up a um, robotics lab come make a space in a private uh, high school near IIIT. So therefore, Students can go to this uh, make it spaces and then in their free time. Uh, whereas if you do a project in your department, it will be mainly focused on uh, your own discipline. Whereas uh, if you want to do a you know, gardening project or a green club project or renewable energy project, no, I work with mechanical engineering students, uh, CSE students. They do the coding, mechanical engineering through the design, electronics students do the you know hardware and so on. So therefore, a lot of this innovation happens at the multidisciplinary level many of these projects you saw such as the robot goalkeeper no, that involves ai computer vision and then no, mechanical uh, robot design electronics you know motor control hardware uh, microcontroller and so on so all of this no is, uh, innovation happens at the multidisciplinary level whereas our students are still doing projects at the uh, departmental level therefore if we create a maker space they can have interchange of ideas and of course, a lot of faculty can also you know, interact with the students and then 
assign them parts of their research projects for uh, uh, students to work on. So another uh, aspect that is neglected very much in India is what is called service learning or community service. And then IEEE gives uh, grants up to thousand, ten thousand dollars or seven lakh rupees no, for uh, what are called uh, engineering projects in community service or epics. So you can see here, now this is a 3D printer uh, designed and developed by our TLC staff. And then uh, these were my master's uh, uh, mechanical uh, mechatronic students. They built uh, CNC machines for uh, this how government high school. So this is one uh, government high school very near uh, AAA TDM. And then this was funded by Capgemini Corporation, which is an MNC IT company based in France. And then uh, it is uh, implemented by the SRO Foundation. We provide all the tools, hand tools, power tools, CNC machines, 3D printers, supplies, and so on. And uh, students you know, come up with uh, product designs of their own. So why is that uh, now it's very easy for everybody to innovate, like the Gitanjali Rao? No? That is because uh, now hardware and software have become uh, very cheap or even free. On the top, you have the Apollo guidance computer cost $110 billion. So now a laptop or a microcontroller has got more RAM, ROM, and CPU. The smartphone that you have in your pocket is a supercomputer, costs a few thousand rupees. Therefore, there's a tremendous uh, democratization of technology. No? So anybody can buy this gps gsm bluetooth or rfid etc etc you know, and then put them all together and then create your own product and then sell it in the market or you know license the technology and then uh, because it is all based on open source uh, hardware and software all that you have to do is uh, you know google for ideas so in fact uh, many of these products you know, i like it's similar to cooking you no know? so what we do in a maker space you know like we provide the ingredients, no? like basically if you are going to make idli or those or whatever, change the ingredients. What are the ingredients? No? Actuators, sensors, microcontroller software, and then of course there's a mechanical body, a chassis, or platform. And then you can you know, change them in different combinations, add GPS, GSM, Bluetooth, camera, or microcontroller, and so on. So therefore you can build a, a drone, you can build a CNC machine, you can build a 3D printer, or you can build an underwater robot, or a ground vehicle, etc. So it's, therefore, it's very similar to cooking. No, so therefore, uh, how what are you going to cook up with your basic ingredients in a makerspace or in a lab? Then uh, there are some interesting examples of uh, smart products. This is a PhD mechanical engineering uh, project uh, uh, at the University of Michigan um, by an Indian origin student. He started a company called Lift Labs. So many people with Parkinson's disease. See, they have uh, difficulty uh, eating the, uh, by themselves. Somebody has to feed them, either a relative or a caretaker, which is you know, difficult and also difficult for them in terms of self-esteem and so on. So therefore, what he did was uh, you, you, took, you take a spoon or a knife or a fork, you know, add some embedded system, you know, basically a microcontroller, vibration sensor, and then you measure the vibration sensor, and then you basically do active vibration uh, control, similar to active noise control. Then as the patient becomes more and more uh, severe, not serious, then the vibrations increase accordingly, the controller, no, it uh, changes the counter vibrations and then cancels them. It's a learning system. And now this uh, company was startup was bought by uh, Google and all these companies like uh, Apple, Microsoft, they're all getting into healthcare technologies. As we see from the case of the COVID virus and relative technologies. Now, healthcare technology is a major aspect. People are working on uh, masks, PPEs, etc. Many of them, you know, you can make at home using 3D printing. In fact, the 3D printing is called uh, personal manufacturing. You know, I can make toys, I can make souvenirs, I can make gift items, etc. You know, at home using a 3D printer or even a CNC machine. You know? Then I can sell them in the market. So therefore, uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, explosion in uh, creative toys that people are making. For example, you can have uh, your own bangles and earrings and necklaces and so on that you can make with uh, 3D printers. So, so people are becoming you know, very innovative and then they're becoming entrepreneurs and then selling them online because you have access to a global market. 
Similarly, two more uh, innovative projects. You no, know, one is of course uh, Amity Smart Crib. Basically, it is a motorized uh, crib that kind of you know uh, uh, swings to keep the child uh, asleep. Then it adds some white noise in the background. No, so therefore the child goes to sleep fast. Similarly, you got the yoga mat with pressures to distribute the pressure sensors, and then you can do it on your own. Then at the end of the exercise, you no, know, the um, system gives you feedback on how effective or efficient your yoga exercise was. And then uh, similarly, this was a, um, you know, it's a Japanese uh, summer intern, mechanical engineer, engineering final year student. She did a very innovative project on a smart punching bag. Uh, we put some you know, pressure sensors that distributed into this uh, punching bag. And then uh, we have a load cell to measure the strain and then there's a timer there is a bluetooth module and then uh, you got this microcontroller so this bluetooth module sends all this exercise data punching data uh, to the coach so therefore after two months or three months the coach can decide you know, how more accurate how faster and how more powerful you no know, the boxer has become so this can become a very useful product that can sell in the market to improve the uh, training of uh, boxers. No? Of course, uh, boxing is one sport in India, which is in, in which uh, India is doing very well. Therefore, such projects can be very useful. And then, of course, uh, uh, people are putting uh, connected uh, devices everywhere. This is a Philips uh, connected toothbrush. It costs about 25,000 rupees. Whereas the commercial uh, manual toothbrush is only about uh, 30 rupees. Now, so basically, what it does is it has got a Bluetooth module and then it has got some pressure sensors, etc. So then at the end of the day, it tells you, you know, how you know uh, effective your brushing has been. You know, so it collects and gives you data, etc. So you can you know, um, keep your brushing. Of course, as with all innovative products, the early versions are very, very expensive. But with more and more production, you know, the price comes down. The electric toothbrushes. So now, a lot and a lot of people are using electric toothbrushes. It's like you know, clean getting regular cleaning of your uh, teeth you know? so therefore uh, it's going to catch up no? so we've done a lot of uh, you know, such technologies we given uh, uh, internships workshops we were conducted and then we conducted industrial visits and then we have uh, given uh, workshops to work, uh, self-employed working women no in uh, collaboration with the entrepreneurship development institute so that women can be introduced to 3D printing, you no? Know, because now they are doing uh, handicrafts, etc. You no, know, all of them are done by hand, which is you no know, not very you know neat or not visually appealing, etc. Therefore, if you can, you no, know, use uh, 3D CAD modeling, CAM, you no, know, it has all become uh, accessible to the common man because we have something called Tinker CAD, you no, know, from Autodesk. Yeah. So, which so all that you need is an internet connection. And then you can come up with design your 3D product. Similarly, SolidWorks has come up with uh, uh, online uh, apps for uh, even children. So children can make their own toys, you know, necklaces, wearable uh, devices, etc. No, so wearable, uh, uh, you know, earrings or whatever, bangles, etc. So children can build them, and then uh, children can, uh, you know, make them with 3D printers. So 3D printers, you know, become a very democratizing tool the question is not how effectively we are going to use them and then there are uh, stages of innovation in the beginning we had the you know automation and now we have robotics on automation then uh, what we are talking about like with 3d printers etc we are having electronics everywhere we had mechatronics after that we have avionics aerospace plus electronics we have biomedical plus electronics we even have civionics sorry it is written civics it should be CV on it, civil, civil engineering plus uh, electronic, a lot of distributed, no, uh, load cells, uh, vibration sensors, and bridges, buildings, etc. So, before the bridges, buildings become, uh, you know, weak and collapse, you no, know, causing damage and uh, loss of lives. Uh, so, these uh, sensors can continuously monitor, they are uh, by wireless, they can send data to a control center. And then when things become weak, you know, then the vibrations or whatever, you know, the changes become more severe. And then um, the people can take action. So therefore, uh, to this electronics, now we are adding uh, software and then intelligence like AI, machine learning, uh, et cetera, plus networking. It is wireless or you know, wired. And then all the data that we get, you know, 
we can analyze them in, in terms of big data algorithms and then analyze customer behavior etc for example there's a nest you know connected uh, camera um, cctv camera in the us you now in many cases it has you know helped solve crimes and then protect people from uh, you know, home invaders etc and then uh, you can uh, use uh, the tools of e-commerce so therefore anybody can become their own manufacturer at least as a hobby in fact the, some of the staff from tlc you know they're using uh, uh, 3d i mean uh, the cnc laser engraver they are supplying you know taking photos from uh, customers and then uh, engraving them as uh, through laser you know, and then uh, frame it and give it to them so therefore they got like a cottage industry at home so, you know it's a, it's a hobby it is a fun project but then you're also earning enough money in the process so again this is a very interesting example some of you may be familiar there was a movie you know in his name called the uh, malaysian last year telugu movie he was a sixth grade dropout his mother was a weaver this pochampalli you know silk sarees so therefore because it was all like manual like the charka after years of operation she was having severe no shoulder uh, injury etc so therefore he did a basic automation initially with the ac motors and then he learned microcontrollers and embedded systems no on his own including assembly language programming so he made it a computer control machine so our 3d printers our cnc machines laser cutters no? uh, pcb machines these are all very similar machines so no? we are using stepper motors instead of ac or dc motors because that's a cheaper not easier to use so then uh, um, he all this he did on his own and then he has patented them and then he is you know helping uh, the improve the productivity a lot of people he got a padma shri award a few years back he has given a ted talk similarly you know some of the self employed women's uh, group you know um, women the entrepreneurs that i have met you know they are all uh, making sanitary napkins at home it is all thanks to uh, arunachalam murugananda you know he is again a school dropout from coimbatore you know took several years you know and then he indigenous the sanitary napkin machine so therefore thousands of uh, women and others you know they are getting job they are having their own companies now these machines are being used in uh, uh, african countries also so therefore more women have you know access to healthy living you know avoiding absenteeism at school or at work etc so if uh, school dropouts can become innovative and then do uh, innovative products and then uh, have startups and then make a difference i am sure you no know, our uh, students also can uh, do that in a big way you know with proper in fact uh, there's a lot of interest in uh, the maker culture maker spaces in africa and uh, this is an interesting article that happened about a few years back in uh, bbc about how you know by pursuing robotics uh, 3d printing etc people are becoming you no know, very innovative so you can uh, add you know i not spoken about industrial design artistic design now there are tools for that or you can employ an industrial uh, designer no to make your end product now so we mostly speak about engineering design i mean we talk about product design because we are engineers we don't have you know artistic or design so at least most of us and therefore we can employ an artistic designer no this is basically the interface that makes it appealing like in the case of apple the apple's uh, original uh, thinkpad laptop no was based on this uh, japanese uh, bento box you know lunch box design so again the art artistic design adds aesthetics and value people uh, spend more money on apple products no because of the aesthetics of it no so in fact there is a famous quote uh, that art without engineering is dreaming and engineering without art is calculating we do calculation and then develop and but then the uh, end products are rather bland you know therefore if we can make an uh, artistic or um, aesthetic product you know, that adds value to our work so how to teach uh, students to be innovative uh, in fact uh, as i mentioned earlier a lot of uh, teaching in india is uh, passive you know from the uh guru to the shishya you no know, the teaching so therefore there's not much interaction whereas in the modern engineering pedagogy the teacher is more as a coach you know as a facilitator basically uh, they help uh, create the conditions for invention of new ideas or innovations uh, rather than simply you know memorizing and then reproducing 
reciting you know in the exam sets so this is Seymour paper he's the he was a famous ai pioneer at mit he developed the logo programming language and the lego mind some kit for children you know, which has made the kids build robots and then do programming etc you know, at a very young age so therefore we have a lot of access to low cost open source hardware and free open source software and therefore our students can be you know um, making use of a level playing field if you look at uh, mit robotics course you know, or engineering introduction to engineering design course these are all the things they are using, you know, like an Arduino, a DC motor, an RC servo, potentiometer, LEDs, jumper wires, breadboard, resistors, you know, also regulators, etc. In fact, the maker spaces that we have uh, for the government high schools you know, with uh, Capgemini's collaboration, we are providing pretty much the same kit. Therefore, government high school children in uh, India have the same access to the hardware and software that uh, college students in MIT have. In fact, if you look at the, the robotic stores, uh, they, they have basically just three or four basic equipments. After that, they go and do a product like an underwater robot or a drone or a mobile robot, etc. using that. Whereas, unfortunately, in India, we are still doing lab courses the old fashioned way, the entire 14, 15 weeks, you know, every week. Students uh, week after week they do one experiment by you know following the instructions in a manual. Whereas uh, in MIT here on the right hand side this is a mechatronics course uh, offered at uh, uh, University of California Berkeley. Again you see they only have two or three three or four basic experiments to so RD you know motor control etc. After that the students come up with their, their own like a machine that uh, delivers you know drinks or you know. Uh, system that plays guitar you know, with uh, RC servos, etc. Therefore, uh, we need to go more you know, instead of asking the students to just repeat the experiments and then um, um, you know, uh, write a report. You know, we just give them the basic tools. Like, again, this is similar to cooking, you know, like in uh, what do you do in a cooking competition or a cooking you know, uh, event? So, basically, you just give them the ingredient, so how they mix and match them, so what comes up with that. You know? basically up to that so this is how the innovation works in the real world in engineering and in industry and then students are given introduction to this approach in uh, colleges so we are doing this in high schools similarly you know this kit can be a very basic part of uh, engineering education so i encourage the engineering uh, faculty to introduce you know if not uh, as part of a coursework because you are part of an affiliate anything university system you don't have any control over your syllabus etc in that case, you no, know, you can at least have the students come on Saturdays and days or evenings, you no, know, learn RD, you know, basic programming, coding, etc. So, in the case of core engineers, students, you no, know, it improves their uh, um, programming skills. In the case of computer science or IT majors, it improves their hardware skills. Then they work together, and then you know, um, they can spend. And if the product uh, innovation turns to be interesting, there's the commercial prospect. The students can uh, continue this project in the second year or third year and then maybe by the time they come to the fourth year you know, they have a viable product they can pitch to the customer and then they can sell it you not know? so or uh, file for intellectual property so this is how the maker space as well the maker movement still it has not caught up in india very much you know? so people come together from um, children all the way to you know them elderly person in their 70s or 80s they come together they learn you know programming they learn electronic soldering etc they, they help each other you know, somebody has some problem in mind somebody comes up with solution they work together and then you know, they have a prototype the proof of concept prototype and then which they pitch it to the, the customers in fact there are public uh, maker spaces available so uh, no, you can have one such common maker space very very inexpensive you know so uh, like two or three lakh rupees you know is the cost of the entire hand tools power tools components as a 3d printer cnc machine etc in our school maker spaces college maker spaces so that is something that any college or university can offer and then you can uh, let the kids you know students play with them and then come up with their uh, innovations so 3D printing, as we mentioned earlier, it has you know, become very popular, but it does have some problems. That is why there's still a role for 
subtractive manufacturing and CNC. You know, because uh, uh, unlike CNC, you know, uh, 3D printing is a very slow process. It takes hours and hours. Therefore, no, unless you are making uh, products uh, pro products in um, you know uh, small quantities. If you are going to make them in bulk, then uh, injection molding machine or a CNC machine is the right approach. So therefore, uh, for people who make uh, print for, for their personal use, or uh, you're making some, you know, hubs or uh, connectors or uh, couplers, etc., using plastic. Again, the core material is still plastic because the metal 3D printers are very expensive, and uh, therefore most of the um, processing is uh, manufacturing is limited to plastic like ABS, or PLA, etc., which has some limitations. You no, know? therefore you need. Uh, uh, you know, access to a CNC machine. So custom manufacturing. You know, people are making 3D selfies uh, and then selling them on the, uh, you know, Amazon, etc. People are making toys and then you can, you know, take a CNC machine or 3D printer, convert it into a chocolate making machine. So even people are making, you know, unborn for visually disabled people. You know, they're converting this uh, ultra scans into. Uh, 3D, you no, know, uh, print. So therefore, you can have it for a photograph. You can have a 3D of the unborn child, etc. So it's a very, very innovative. You know, there's a lot of uh, applications in the healthcare, particularly as we all know from, uh, you know, the days of COVID. So there's a lot of uh, potential for 3D. So we made a 3D uh, low-cost DA with 3D printer. Again, you know, a lot of this. Uh, uh, solutions are already available online. We don't have to go and you know reinvent the wheel. So our design was based on open source uh, design at uh, called Hypercube online, and then cost less than about twenty five thousand rupees. So we sold our first uh, 3D printer to the Teaching Learning Center at IIT Hyderabad. So this design can be extended dual or triple nozzle printers in a straightforward manner. So we uh, supplied. Uh, uh, 3D printer to the Blind Relief Association in New Delhi, which is one of the oldest uh, schools for uh, visually impaired children in India, in New Delhi. And uh, they now what they do is that you know, they get vacuum formed uh, uh, teaching materials because uh, so blind children cannot see, they learn by touch, you know, tactile sensing. So therefore the 3D printer, like you know, puzzles, uh, etc., that you see here, you no. Know, these are easy for children to learn map, etc. The teachers can, you know, make their own uh, <clears throat> uh, teaching uh, aids instead of buying once a year supplies from uh, Central National Institute in Dharadu. Therefore, it uh, enables the teachers to become more, you know, creative in their teaching. It is more democratizing, so more people can use them. So particularly if you're interested in building or uh, getting your own students uh, to build 3D printers, uh, I would suggest, no, uh, Joshua Pierce is a pioneer at the University of, uh, at, uh, at, uh, I think, you know, Michigan Technological University in the US. He has even built um, low cost uh, uh, open source metal 3D printer. Of course, uh, it's not very as accurate as a uh, much more expensive 3D printer. What they do is that they just add a welding, uh, you know, uh, tool to a conventional delta type uh, 3D printer. Uh, the the finish quality is not very accurate, but then it is good enough. So what uh, Joshua uh, uh, Pierce does is, you no, know, he conducts even 3D printer workshops for uh, high school teachers. Then high school teachers come, you know, they can. Uh, Build them. So one of the problems with using 3D printers in India, I found, is the humidity. You no, know? humidity and uh, dust. You no, know? so it makes the 3D printers life short-lived. Therefore, uh, if you build your own 3D printer, it becomes easy to repair, easy to maintain, and so on. So, so this was our uh, TLC 3D printer. These are some of the simple, you no, know, uh, products that we made. We give them as souvenirs to visitors. And then uh, you can see we uh, about nine uh, high schools in Chennai and Bangalore. They got uh, free uh, 3D printers donated by General Electric in the uh, US under their additive manufacturing program to schools around the world. Each uh, Dremel 3D printer costs around 90,000 rupees. You can see the high school girls there uh, from grade six to nine. 
So they using the power tools that we have woodworking tools. They built their own uh, display case. No, they built uh, different uh, products like birds, etc. Using the software supplied with the Dremel 3D printer, then they have it. So similarly, you can encourage the students to build them and then no, prize them and then they pay some money, you know, to the maker space or the department and then they take it home. So their parents, you know, they're happy that well for the engineering education they have. Uh, uh, spending money on they have made something useful no? that you can give it to your relatives uh, etc for example uh, i have uh, uh, my own uh, 3d printed uh, you know scan all that you need is a 3d scanner which is not very expensive so you can do reverse engineering you no know? so you can, you can take any product and then use a 3d scanner and then reverse engineer and 3d print it at least in plastic so uh, so i give my 3d printed uh, you know uh, best to my relatives or family etc Similarly, subtractive manufacturing, these are all very similar. The milling machine, you can easily convert into a lathe, into a, a router or a laser cutter, engraver, plasma cutter, CNC welding. These are used in textiles, jewelry making, embroidery, etc. And therefore, uh, if you know how to make a 3D printer, you can easily make a, a CNC machine. The commercial machines are very expensive, three lakhs, two lakhs. Five lakhs. No? So again, anything goes wrong, you have to have an AMC, which is expensive for the cost of an AMC. You can build your own uh, your desktop uh, CNC machine, such as the one shown here. So we use uh, machinable wax, no? a DIY machinable wax. This is very useful for the students. So the way that we teach uh, manufacturing CNC, etc., in colleges, that we have one CNC milling machine, one CNC lathe. Then the technician does a demo. The students do all the machining in the software only. Therefore, it is not very satisfying. Whereas with this kind of machine, now which the students can make on their own, now you can make your own you know, fancy products and then you can give it to them or you can even sell them during college day, annual day, etc. So you now you can have competition for innovative products, etc. Again, I can because all these machines are very similar in principle. I take a CNC milling machine, I put a laser engraver in, instead of a, you know drilling or milling tool, then it becomes a laser engraver. So I can take photos, uh, scan them, and then do laser engraving. It looks more fancy. Similarly, I can convert it into a painting robot. Then instead of making you know and then pasting on paper. Uh, Labels, etc. I can do fancy vinyl cutters. The commercial vinyl cutters are about Japanese ones are about eighty thousand rupees. So just for uh, eight fifty rupees vinyl uh, cutter kit, you, know, you can convert the same CNC machine into a vinyl cutter. And the vinyl, the CNC mill itself is only about twenty four thousand. So therefore, you can convert it also into a PCB machine. Most colleges in India, ECE, AAA departments, they don't have PCB machines. Even triple IT DM, no EC department. My department had a uh, PCB machine from Japan for 14 lakh rupees, which hasn't been working for the last five or six years because to repair it, they're asking for three lakh rupees. Our PCB machine is only about 30,000 rupees. It can do double side PCB. So, therefore, uh, there's a lot of potential for students to learn, some things to learn. I'll try to wind up soon. So, then industrial and engineering design. Mechatronics and robotics. Instead of learning these topics from third year, you can learn them in the very first year. Many colleges in the US are having robotics no, courses in the first year itself. Similarly, embedded system. When you talk about smart products, IoT, etc., make you know, a lot of this. And if it is moving, we call it a mechatronic system. If it is not moving, like you know, maybe a smart sensor, etc., it's an embedded system. So you can teach them in the first year itself. Then you can add a mobile app. Now there is this uh, <coughs> new discipline called mechaphonics. No? Basically, mechanical systems which are controlled by a mobile phone. So we call it mecha mechaphonics. Then you can control them. For example, a smart irrigation system. You can control it from online using a web application. Then later you can add AI, machine learning, VR. AR, big data, you know, so all those things too, you can add to your product. So they can they become much more appealing, much more value added compared to the basic you know, system. There's a lot of open source software available. We are encouraging you no know, open source software because it is free. 
in schools. You have uh, Windows, uh, OS, and then uh, Microsoft Office. We are introducing Linux and the Open Office in uh, schools. Similarly, the open source, basic open source hardware is very basic. Arduino, Raspberry Pi, etc. So which students are learning in third year or fourth year of college, we are introducing them in sixth standard, seventh standard in government high school. Similarly, digital fabrication. Digital fabrication means basically 3D printing, CNC milling, laser cutting, etc. So you now you can convert your 3D design into a finished product. So digital fabrication, we are doing it. And therefore, no, when the, particularly in the aftermath of the uh, COVID, et cetera, we, you know, like in uh, the case of Olin, colleges, you know, they can become a business, like, you know, so through product design. So the colleges can encourage their students to uh, come up with innovations, and then this innovation, they can sell the intellectual property or license to interested users, or they can sell like we did with the TLC, you know, we can sell our products to interested buyers and then not make money in the process. You know, typically in a department or a college, there are hundreds of faculty, you know, all with masters or PhD degrees. They are basically engineers. We are engineers first and then teachers second. Therefore, instead of just you know, going and teaching and then coming back, can I also use my engineering skills, you know, to come up with solutions to real world problems. So students can learn uh, while they're earning, they can teach and learn through projects. Now, peer learning is very, very effective compared to you know, classroom passive teaching uh, uh, in theory. So again, there is this uh, interesting uh, you know, um, experiment in a high school in Wisconsin State in the USA. They have a lot of uh, manufacturing machines like CNC, milling machine, lathe, etc. commercial grade. The students get you no know, specifications or uh, code, uh, code from uh, requests from uh, customers, and then they make them, they price them, you know, they do accounting, and then they add a profit and then sell them. So similar things can be done with 3D printing. You know, like if some uh, sub industry people they want, you know, to some 3D printed, uh, you know, parts or uh, for orthopedics, etc. Your students can build them, then they can sell them for a profit. So therefore, they get uh, exposure. And then in future, if they want, you know, they can uh, at least do it as a part-time business you know, at home. In, in, in addition to their regular nine to five jobs, they can come back, make some products with the 3D printer at home, or with the laser cutter at home, or with the CNC machine at home. You know, and then they can uh, make products and sell them. In, uh, so we did the. Uh, Quite a few, you know, uh, chemistry equipment, DIY chemistry equipment for the teaching learning center at Pune University, like spectrophotometer, digital thermometer, you no know, automatic titration, etc. Automatic titration so doing it manually, you know, staying in the lab. You just have a microcontroller based, uh, you know, a smart uh, servo RC servo. It opens and closes. It takes readings, etc. Sends the data to you in a mobile lab or uh, through the internet, you no, know, through the um, um, Wi-Fi, etc. So, for uh, there's a lot of scope. For example, Shimatsu Corporation in Japan, they started, uh, you know, maybe last century as a educational uh, chemistry and physics educational, uh, you know, equipment maker. Now they're a huge company. They make uh, spectrophotometers and some uh, mass spectrometry, etc. In fact, their uh, electrical engineer he got a Nobel Prize in chemistry for his. Uh, discoveries in a mass spectrophotometry. Therefore, it is a lot of developments are possible. And this DIY educational technology, manufacturing education technology, similar to what we did in TLC, can be a good exercise for you. You don't have to do everything from scratch. Just take the technologies we developed in TLC, whether it is a 3D printer or a CNC milling machine or lathe or a laser cutter. Of course, again, many of them are based on open source um, a system so you can even do it on your own if you want and then you can do that for example here uh, uh, there is a company called trip tech based in india started by stanford uh, graduates so, so they went to ethiopia for a project and then they found that uh, during the severe drought the farmers were not using a, a, you know, a drip irrigation they asked why because then the farmers said it was uh, expensive therefore they took the commercial course they fed it through this uh, motorized uh, winding machine, like a VCR, uh, so like a, a suitcase machine, put a laser 
you know device and then there's a microcontroller it tells you the size of the holes the gap between the holes you so therefore you convert this commercial hose into a drip irrigation hose so to market this you know simple idea but very useful idea they started this company called drip tech in india giving jobs to indian now this company recently has been taken over by jane irrigation but then this is an excellent example now this is listed in the a mechatronics textbook and that this is Stanford student by the professor from from Stanford so therefore good example of extreme affordability precision agriculture is again a major area where there are a lot of applications of uh, uh, 3d printing you know you can look up online people are you know, making uh, parts for uh, you know, implements agricultural implements agricultural you know, machines equipment etc using 3d printers Again, this is another company called Open Nairobi, the software guy, he lost his job, he went into hardware. No, now he has an open source company. So some references to those who are interested, if you're not already familiar, uh, insectables.com is a very useful DIY website, has many, many models of uh, 3D printers, CNC machines, etc. Similarly, makezin.com, no? examples of robots, uh, 3D printers, CNC machines, etc. There are other websites also, Hackaday, Thingiverse, then there are suppliers, Spark for Nut of Fruit. No? They have lots of tutorials on open source hardware, software, etc. How to use these microcontrollers, microcomputers like Raspberry. And then, if your students want you know, product ideas, there are very useful uh, <coughs> websites like Pinterest, uh, Etsy. You know, anybody can sell their uh, product like. Uh, bags and toys etc and it's, it's an american website but at least your students can go visit these sites you no know, look for uh, ideas so if you uh, subscribe to make zine or insectables or pinterest it is free every day you get free emails of you know, innovative ideas you like them you bookmark them and save them otherwise you delete them therefore no you may come up with interesting ideas you can put them together use them in indian condition we have met. Then lots of such products in uh, TLC that visitors are very impressed with. So to conclude my talk, you know, innovative product design is the need of the hour in Indian engineering education and industry. And uh, project-based learning is an effective antidote to India's traditional passive uh, learning pedagogy. There's no need to invent the wheel, you know, because lots of these technologies they're already available. You know, they're um, being aggressively shared, you no, know, by you know, um, community community spirited uh, uh, makers and uh, faculty and the researchers uh, from all over the world. In fact, the magic word is Google. Previously, people used to say "Mata Pita Google Dev." Nowadays, people say "No Mata Pita." Sorry, Guru Dev or Guru Dev. Now it is Mata Pita Google Dev. You know, everything is on Google. You just have to search and then adapt it and then you know, modify it and then uh, use it for your purpose and then. Collaboration, crowdsourcing can help. No? Therefore, it is better to have a group and then or a crowd, then things become easier to explain or uh, understand and then uh, work on. So, thank you very much. Thank you for this nice presentation, sir, on a product design. Uh, so, sure. you have given back a different perspective uh, to our participants. We were all talking about 3D printing, additive manufacturing, but uh, yeah. this is actually a pre-processing of that. In fact, uh, yeah, the outcome of different. the product design yeah, yeah. is uh, 3D yeah. printing or additive manufacturing. Yeah, this is one way of printing, you know, uh, designing the product. Yeah. Thank you very much. I will.